It's the Good Advice Show. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Good Advice Podcast. Got a great show for you today. We're talking to one of our local business owners, Wendy Elstermeyer, who just published her new book, Move. It's all about the setback she's had in life from an impoverished childhood to things just not going the way she planned and how she was able to move past not just those circumstances, but all the mental roadblocks that came with it. I think it's a great book that is hope for all of us, no matter what kinds of challenges we go through. And again, you can find a copy of that book on Amazon. Stay tuned. A quick word from one of our sponsors of the podcast, and then we'll dive into our conversation with Wendy. Enjoy. Hey, have you been thinking about your health insurance plan for this next year? Maybe you just jumped to the world of entrepreneurship and you're thinking, geez, is it possible to have a good insurance plan if I'm no longer working for a business? Maybe you're even running a business and you're thinking about what does it look like to have an affordable group plan for your employees? Well, I want to tell you about Optimum Health Insurance. This is a customized health care plan for you and your family. And since 2018, they've been helping people get awesome, affordable health care coverage for really nothing at all. It's easy, it's hassle-free, and frankly, they're different from the big insurance companies that you might talk to. And crazy enough, you might even be paying less than what you've paid at a previous job when you were on some company health insurance plan. If you want to find out more and save money on your health insurance, you absolutely need to go check out OptimumHealthInsurancePlan.com. That's OptimumHealthInsurancePlan.com. That's today's sponsor. Enjoy this episode. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Well, Blake, thank you so much. It's great to be here. I always like, you know, we have people on the show from all over, but there's just something special about someone local who comes on the show and uh, you're local to NWA. So I appreciate you making the time. Uh, Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. So um, like you said, I'm here in Northwest Arkansas and we really love it here. We've raised our kids here the last 10 or 12 years, um, came from Tulsa before that and before that from Washington State. And so had a big career with Walmart and have gone on to be an entrepreneur since Walmart. And um, like you said, now I just wrote my first book and um my Pivotal Solutions Company, we're all about helping people in their business and where they're at. And I really, I feel like I'm living my best life today. Now, you are not a, um, you know, so when people say like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, it can mean some, something kind of snazzy. Uh, you've actually done the work though, because if I remember correctly, you ran a successful painting business prior to this. Yes, I did. Yep. So um, the first business of my own that I opened here in Northwest Arkansas after Walmart was a painting company. And we did residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. Um, and we grew that company and then we sold it at the end of 2020. So, yeah. Right. As the joy of COVID <laughs> inundated right. us all. It, it was a great time to be a painter and, um, our PL was great and things were good. And so, yeah. um, I, I'd kind of decided I loved I loved having my own business, but painting wasn't the business I was in love with. And I'd come to realize that. And um, it actually sold significantly faster than I expected. Did you have a, just as a random question, did you have like a random moment of like, wait, am I, should I sell it? Like with how fast it was moving? Did you have any second thoughts? Yeah. So um, when the gentleman buying it from me said... Your PL is so good. I almost feel bad buying this from you. <laughs> um, I oh my I would say I got a little anxiety in that yeah. moment. Like, <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Was this the right thing? But fast forward, it definitely was the right thing. But yeah, I was scared yeah. that minute. Well, you know, it's just, it's, I, I just like having people on like yourself who, um, you know, kind of the premise of the podcast is that someone could listen to an episode like this and they'd learn like the actionable, tangible things that matter. And so it's nice having someone like yourself on who, you know, with 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 Pivotal Solutions, you're helping people grow their business and you've actually done it yourself. You know, it's not like a hobbyist thing. Like um, I was talking to a guy the other day. He was like, I think I want to go into business consulting. And I was like, well, do you, have you started a business before? He was like, no. I was like, well, what do you know about business? And he was like, I don't know. It just seems like kind of a fun deal. 
So um, <laughs> I, I just love that you have your background has obviously positioned you well. Um, talk to me a little bit about what made you want to write this book. I, I love the name, by the way, Move. It, what it kind of makes me, I don't know if this is the intention, but um, you know, obviously the book is about handling self negative self-talk, jealousy, fear, failure feeling overwhelmed, all these like mental things that just bog us down. And it kind of annoys me how on social media, people are like, oh, being a business owner, it's so great. It's so easy. But everyone listening is, can probably relate with one of these emotions at least. But so I love the name because these things are so stalling. Kind of where I, I go with your book title is like, just move, like just move, just, you know, don't sink, but just move. But um, anyway, now that I've told you my take on your book, I'd love to hear kind of <laughs> How did it come about? Like, why did you write it? Like, I'd love to know more. Yeah. So um, I'd love to tell you, well, you kind of mentioned like being a business consultant, right? Um, I actually didn't know that's what I was doing. I was business consulting before I knew that's what it was called. Sure. And so um, as, as I started with Pivotal Solutions, part of the name is Pivotal, right? Like, somebody said, well, really all this stuff you're doing for these other businesses, that's business consulting. And I'm like, yeah, but consulting really sounds like a lot of talking yeah. and I want to do stuff. I yeah. want to, I want to help these companies do stuff. And so anyways, um, as I was growing in, in, in this pivotal solution space, I was meeting with all these business owners. Um, I met with over 60 business owners, um, uh, all in a very short period of time. And I spent an hour with them and really just got to hear what was meaningful to them. Cause I feel like before COVID, when I had my painting company, I knew a lot of people that were out in our community and then COVID hit. And when I came back with my next business, it was like, everyone was new. It was all mm -hmm. different business owners than yeah. I had seen before. So I was kind of on maybe a little bit of a mission to get to know my community again. Yeah. And now what's in their heads and what are they thinking now? And so as I'm having these meetings, um, of course, there's things I can do to help their business. But one of the things that became very glaringly obvious was some of the stuff I could do for them and was doing for them, even unintentionally, didn't have to do necessarily with their finances of their business or things like that. It was these um, mental roadblocks, these mental places where they were really just stuck. And, and sometimes I would sit down with them for an hour and somehow we would end up right there digging into, um, you know, them being overwhelmed and okay, well, you know, and my nature is, let me help you with that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we would talk about their schedule and what does that look like? And, um, it's okay that they make time for their family. And, you know, a lot of small business owners, we feel really guilty when we take time away from the business to spend with our family. Like we need to do that, but we, we make ourselves feel bad about it. I talk about guilt in my book too, but right. So it was all these mental things. And as I was helping these small business owners through these things, they were like, you need to write a book about that. <laughs> like that really made a difference for me yeah. and you need to write a book about that. And so, I don't know, after probably six months of kind of going through that experience, I was like, you know what? I'm going to write a book about that. Mm -hmm. What, what's, what was been like your own personal experience of like, I don't know if you would say you've mastered these things. I know personally speaking, I feel like I'm always, you know, one step forward, two steps back, but, um, you know, business ownership is so emotionally taxing. What's been your journey like of overcoming that guilt of, you know, that tension between, you know, oh, I really do want to spend time with my family, but I also, I do need to work, um, you know, giving yourself a break, I guess. Um, I'd love to hear more about how you've kind of navigated that. Yeah. So um, I love to give yourself a break. I call it giving yourself grace. So um, in my book, even in the intro, it'll say, give yourself grace, right? We're human. Um, for me, I would tell you, and, and there's a piece in my book about this. It's really about organizing your time and letting yourself be okay to say, okay, tomorrow afternoon is going to be dedicated to taking my mother-in-law to the hospital and that's okay. Right. Like, but the day after I'm going to spend all day working on my taxes or what, whatever that looks like for you. Um, there's, there's all these things. And for me, it's about kind of planning that out. Mm -hmm. 
And I had a, a small business owner say to me, okay, so something's going to happen that's going to destroy my whole day and my whole plan. I said, absolutely. Of course it is. Right. But then you start again tomorrow. Yeah, right. And you know, the plan doesn't always come to life perfectly, but, um, and I'll tell you very personally, I don't, I have a, in my mind, what is business related. So my book is included in that. I don't work on any of those things on Saturday or Sunday. Um, and after somewhere between five and six, but after five to six, I don't work on any of those things. I spend time with my son and my dog and my husband and, you know, watch TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of my dog and then yeah. my son and my husband in that order. But. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's good. It, I, and I love how you share sort of that permission to be human, um, you know, because it is tough as a business owner. I, I remember my daughter, it was a day that I was super busy. My daughter, who's now almost three, but she was around a little bit over older than two at the time. But I remember she was holding her nose outside my office and I looked up there and she had a bead that she had put up her nose. Oh, and gosh. so anyway, it was like maybe one in the afternoon. We did not get home from the hospital till like, 9 30 at night and i remember being so frustrated that the day the day was over it was gone um not frustrated at her but just just frustrated in general of like oh man all these things i needed to do i just wasn't able to do um so i i like your perspective on that for sure but thanks yeah i have a lot of um uh, you you kind of talked that i had a woman that came to me and she her business she was doing trainings and but she had a lot of really serious stuff going on in her family life stuff going on with her father she really needed to be there for these things and be present in her life and i was like great let's plan out your calendar for the next 12 months if you do two of these trainings a month what does that look like? How does that look like for your finances? And by the end of the hour, which I don't know if this was good or bad for me, right? I just, I do for people and I just believe that the world has enough to come back to you, but she didn't need my help at all. I had like helped her solve her, you know, and she went and made great plans and was very successful. And I was, I was just as happy with that as if she would have hired me. But so I just like gave her that permission, I guess, that she needed to give herself. Mm -hmm. She should have offered to pay you though. <laughs> just as an aside, just for you guys who are listening, who you have friends who, you know, give you their savvy advice. I just think it's always, I, I think it's great on your part. That shows the kind of person you are, that you were just so giving. Um, but for our listeners, always offer to pay for their time. Always. <laughs> I I so. love that you said that because here's what I I have some friends that have offered to do things for free for me that that's their day job, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have a real good friend. She's an organizer. That's her day job. When she comes and organizes for me, I pay her. She's like, you don't have to do that. Yes, I do. That's your day job. Yeah. If you're going to come help me with something that is your day job, I'm going to pay you for it. And that's kind of what I try to live by with my friends. Yeah. I have a podcast episode I did forever ago. It was like in the first year or so. But it was called um, "Real Friends Pay Full Price," which sounds like really harsh in hindsight. Like if you're my friend, I'm, <laughs> but I just realized when I was running my business that um, the people who were really, really my friend, I guess I don't know, they always offered, "Hey, I, I want to pay your time. I want to make sure I pay your time." Um, versus like the person who you haven't seen in like eight months, who's like, "Hey, can we get a cup of coffee?" And then you know, <laughs> they want your services for free, basically. So. Anyway, totally unrelated to what we're talking about, but just kind of a random <laughs> right. aside. So, what was the um, what was the process of writing a book? By the way, is that was it painful, fun, exciting? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Yeah. So, um, I never wanted to be an author. That wasn't ever my plan, my goal. Like I, that was that was not ever even in my vision of my life. Um, so last year. Well, I guess it was fall of the year before that I decided, okay, I'm going to write a book about that. Um, I didn't know how that was going to work. I had to get to know myself a little bit. So I, it took me about six months to realize that if I worked on my book in the afternoon, I could work on it for five hours and still get, I felt like hardly any movement. But if I work on it first thing in the morning when I get up, in three hours, I could do what I can do in a month in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. 
I, I mean, just so kind of just getting to know myself and how I function best. Um, the writing it was a lot of fun. I would say that the painful part was the editing process. Um, so, you know, I think by the time I, pu- I actually, I lost count of how many editing versions it went through. <laughs> um, but a lot, and I worked really hard to, I, I feel like my book sounds like you're talking to me. Like it should sound like you're talking to me. Yeah. So, um, it's definitely, you know, it doesn't have a bunch of big fancy words and all of that stuff in it. Um, but also to the title it's move, right? So the reason it got to that is I just kept getting down to what am I trying to get you to do? What's the whole point? Why am I telling you these stories and sharing all these very intimate details about situations I went through with you is because I want you to feel like you can move and be powerful in your space, whatever that looks like in the world. And um, so that's kind of how it came to. So yeah, it was, um, I it, I did inspire three more books. So you are going to see more books from me. And I feel like I will be able to get those done a lot more efficiently the next time. <laughs> All right. So what's, can we get a little spoiler? What's, what's the next book you're thinking about? Yeah. So um, I'm kind of torn between two. So I I guess we'll see whichever one gets to paper first. But um, at the end of the book, as I really, it's kind of set up. So it starts taking away these mental blocks as you walk through this first book. So all these different mental things that are holding you up. And then the next book I want to do, this one's move and I want to do one called plan. And so basically on the idea of, okay, now you've removed all these mental blocks that were in your way. Now let's go make a bunch of goals and plans and like get you there, right? Like whatever there looks like for you. So um, say like a planning and goal setting kind of idea to it. And then the other one, as you go through my book, a lot of it is about mental blocks, but I get to a chapter that says financial security matters. And it talks about how um, financial security is different for all of us. You know, if you're a young kid and you have $500 in the bank, you probably feel rich, right? Um, You know, and then as you have a family and all these things, you might need a couple thousand dollars to feel financially secure, or you might need a retirement and how it's different for everybody, but that's okay. But having financial security makes you make better decisions, right? You have better judgment. You might not work someplace you hate and are miserable for as long, Mm -hmm. like these things. And so it kind of talks about the judgment and the confidence that it gives you to make better decisions in your life. And so the that's just a chapter, but then I really like follow that with a book that would be called Save and it would be Pivotal Solutions for Your Finances and um, just kind of really talk through a lot of things. And, um, sh- you know, finances get so personal, right? When somebody's like, if somebody just walked up and be- was like, how much do you have in your checking account? You might be really offended by that, right? Yeah. Um, so or, anyways, yeah. Or even like, you know, what have you spent your money on in the last, like what's the top three things you've purchased? So right, right. Um, so just hopefully helping to really drive more conversations um around what what does financial security look like and mean? And um, not everybody's gonna be millionaires ever, period. Like that's just not how the world is. Uh, but you can still feel financially secure and have that confidence without being a millionaire. Something I've noticed about you is just how savvy you are with finances. And so the book makes sense, but I remember some of our earlier conversations, how, and even kind of referenced it, how that your buyer for your business was like, wow, your P&L is amazing. Um, I know finances is extremely overwhelming for business owners, especially new business owners. Um, And in, in some cases, I think many business owners see their business as I will get out of it what I put into it, meaning um, I talked to a business owner who was starting uh, a business and they like in the first day of the business, no customers bought like a $40,000 truck for the business. Um, oh. And was it like being clever about taxes or anything like that? It was just like, yeah, I mean, I need this, right? And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> you have no customers. What are you doing? So um, is this something that has just always just made sense to you? Like, how have you gotten so good at navigating finances uh, as a business owner? 
Yeah. So I'm sure some of that background started with being a Walmart store manager. So I was a store manager with Walmart. So we had a PL. We learned how to read a PL. Um, we learned how to move different levers on a PL. And um I was always really passionate about people. So I would go figure out how to help us save money in all the other areas. So I could like, so to speak, protect my staff, if that makes sense, right? Like make sure my people were taken care of. And and so that meant the other lines on the PL really had to come in and be where they needed to be. And then that kind of carried over as I grew with Walmart. I came to the corporate office and um, I ended up, you know, kind of falling into the role of financing, doing finances for our neighborhood market format and things like that. And then as I came out of Walmart um, and I went into my own business, I tell you the first year I did not do a great job. As a matter of fact, I messed up my QuickBooks so bad that the next year I I spent on weekly calls with a lady teaching me how to fix my QuickBooks because, you know, coming from corporate America, they put all the numbers in for you, right? When you're a small (laughs) business owner, that's all your job. Um, So that was quite a transition. Um, But I also, somebody had told me, um, well, you can't sell your business if you don't have numbers and you can't get loans, if you don't have numbers and all that. So I was like, I knew that was important. Um, But yeah, I would say uh, I I had to work hard to get my small business numbers in the bank, you know, and when I started Pivotal Solutions, I mean, I opened a bank account right away. It was all connected right away. Um, I didn't make decisions like what you're talking about, right? Like, let's go out and make a big purchase. With my painting company, we did some of that and I regretted it. And I was like, what were we thinking? You know? (laughs) Um, So some of it is experience. I do love numbers. I always have loved numbers. Um, And some of it is, yeah, I've just, I messed it up and now I'm better at it. Yeah. I've always been a fan of like being as lean as possible. I, I talked to a woman who was a realtor who had just quit her job to become a realtor. And, um, on the same vein, she was like, yeah, I just paid for a TV commercial. And I was like, oh, well, how much was that? She was like, it was (laughs) $10,000 and brand new realtor, which in our area, I don't know if you guys who are listening, what your area is like, it's probably similar, but in our area, there's, you know, 3,000, 4,000 realtors that are all competing. So um, it's tough to start out with that kind of a big, big expense. But yeah, I think we all have those stories though, of like expenses that's like, it sounded good at the time. And like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? Um, but I, I have, like I said, I have noticed about you, how you seem to have a real knack for navigating finances. And, um, and even, I think some, even our, our listeners maybe who are longer term business owners, meaning longer term, not quite, but even in their second, third, even fourth year may not even know what a P and L is or an income statement or it be managing their books in any way. Um, so if that's you, maybe you should call Wendy. <laughs> so I could definitely help with that. Yeah. So how do you split time between writing and your, cause I think this is an important question. You know, many, many of us as business owners, we have like the business, we sometimes have side hustles also. And then there's other things that occupy our time. You know, you have your family, you have the I'll just call it like the book brand, um, not yep. implying it's necessarily different, but the book brand, what you want to do with that, with plan and save, um, and then your actual business pivotal solutions. Uh, and then I see you at networking events. So I know you're out in the community and meeting people and you know having a great time. What what does organizing your time and just choosing what to focus on, like how do you decide what deserves your time first? Well, um, I can tell you, I am very particular about managing my time. Um, And I actually have a whole little bit of how to stop yourself from feeling overwhelmed, you know, how to get out of overwhelm and then how to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important to your time is is truly yours. And it's okay to one, say no. I have a section that says say no nicely, right? Mm -hmm. Like all these ways to say no nicely. But also um, if you were to get a snapshot on my calendar, it literally says book time. And it's from seven to nine in the morning, uh, three days a week. So that's, I mean, every 
thing I'm doing is on my calendar. And then as far as like networking and stuff. So for example, I am going to be networking out in the community in January and February. So, and then in March and April, my focus changes, right? Like, so I take everything in very focused blocks, right? I'm going to be, you know, I have certain blocks, every big project. So every big customer project has its own block of time. Um, I give extra time to those. I know I I really have done a lot of self-evaluation. So if it's something that I just need to listen and I don't need to talk about it. I usually do it early in the morning, right? (laughs) I'm a great listener in the mornings. Um, I enjoy having coffee with people. Like I'm just a really great listener in the mornings. Uh, And then the afternoons, I'm a great talker in the afternoons, right? So if it's something where um, I am presenting something to a customer, I'm giving them something they need, or, you know, um, even doing a speaking engagement, I do that stuff in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very scheduled. I love also your um, self-awareness about yourself of like the times of day and like where you best fit in, like the kinds of roles you do. Because I do think this is important to think about because I think a lot of our listeners are in different places with that. Of Like I was talking to someone the other day who um, actually it was a long time ago, several months ago, um, talking about being an entrepreneur and starting a side hustle. And I was like, well, what do you, what do you like to do? You know, he was like, he literally was like, I don't even know. <laughs> and I was like, what do you, what do you, what, what are some of your strengths? And he was like, I don't know. And I was like, well, tell me about like, what are like, like, what is like when you're in your vibe, like really doing well, like, what does that look like? And he was like, I don't know. And I was like, what is this so weird? I've never met someone who's so does not know. And so it's nice to talk to you and hear you say like with such confidence, like I do really well here. And this is like for talking, it's like, gotta be in the afternoon. And um, how, how did you get to that point of just that self-awareness? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I've worked on it for a long time, but I think it really did start at Walmart. Right. So we had a lot of different meetings and, uh, I, I don't know how to say this except to just say it, but in the mornings, if you make me talk a lot or ask me a lot of questions, like I get crabby (laughs) (laughs) and I, I don't like that. Like, I know that about myself, but I don't really love that about myself. Um, but I probably, oh gosh, it's so hard to really pinpoint it, but you'll, you'll read in my book that I read the Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Yeah, great book. so many times in my career. Um, and so I think a lot of that self-awareness probably came from that. Uh, I talk about when I was young, when I was a young manager at Walmart, I was not friendly. I didn't come from a great background. I didn't, you know, have a lot of, um, you know, where they say like everybody gets a trophy. Like that wasn't the life I lived. I wasn't ever in anything where I got a trophy as a kid, like that wasn't Mm -hmm. part of it and not to give away too much about, um, but I share a lot of personal things from my background growing up really poor and all that. So when I started having to work with all these people at Walmart, I, you know, I had to like start from the beginning. Like I had to learn how to smile. (laughs) I had to learn how to, um, I, I even tell you there's time in there where I told you, I, I was the best at working freight. That's really how I started getting promoted. I could work more freight than anyone else. Why? Cause I didn't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't want to be friends. Right. And if you met, well, you know, me today in today's world, right. After Walmart. So fast forward 25 years, I love to talk to everyone and hear know, all their so stories warm and bubbly. I, I, it's so surprising to me. <laughs> all of that at some point in my career, I really learned like it didn't come naturally. Like it does for some people. It comes really naturally that to be personal, personable. Um, and, and I have been for more than 10 years now, but I wasn't always, I had to learn all those things. That's a uh, hope for all of us for things that, <laughs> You maybe aren't super great about in your business. You can learn to be great about it, whether it's sales or management or what have you. Um, Wendy, this has been such a nice conversation today. We're out of time. For people who are listening who they want to pick up the book or they want to work with you directly, what's the best way for them to do that? All right. I love that. So they can go to pivotalsolutions.co. 
and just co so not.com <laughs> and uh, they'll find my website all about me you can also find me on linkedin you can find me on instagram at pivotal solutions for you and on facebook pivotal solutions dot ar or backslash ar uh anyway yeah you can find me at all those places and i would love to hear from you or talk to you or just um have coffee or anything i I really love hearing other people's stories. So, yeah. Thank you, Wendy, for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, for our listeners, if you want to check out her book, you can find it on her website, pivotalsolutions.co. It's also available on Walmart and Amazon and pretty much anywhere you're going to buy a book. I'd venture to guess it'd be somewhere on there. Uh, she has a hard copy and also an ebook version you can check out as well. And if you're checking out the show for the first time, what the heck are you waiting on? Click the subscribe button, click the follow button so you can keep getting good advice wherever you are. And don't forget, if you own a business you want to advertise on the show, you can reach out at blake at goodadvicecoaching.com or if you want to just support the podcast, you can go to our Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash good advice. And of course, all the love in the world for you. Thank you so much for supporting the show. I really appreciate it. That's today's good advice. We'll catch you later. See ya.